knife, um, YouTube, or Okay, Jasmine, just so you know, I have you down as, as the, as pinned as the main presenter. So good afternoon to all. My name is Jasmine Cacavelli, and on behalf of the ASAP Women's Empowerment Committee and Student Life at Bronx Community College, we would like to welcome you all this afternoon to our Let Dreamers Dream event. I'm going to introduce our guest speakers, Ivani Razo, Student Life Specialist, Jamile Martinez, current student member of the ASAP Women's Empowerment Committee, and currently she is a student at BCC, Chrissy Martinez, an alumni from Bronx Community College. And now we're gonna hear Ivani Razo speak. Good evening or good afternoon. Actually, it's early, late afternoon, um, everyone. My name is Yvonne Arazo. I am a student life specialist in the Office of Student Life. I also work with um, Dreamers, Undocumented, and DACA mented students. And um, I wanted to give you a kind of like a brief overview of what those three terms mean, right? So when you ask what's a dreamer, um, when it comes to immigration reform, a dreamer, which is often spelled with the word dream in caps, right? So it's dream. Uh, it refers to an immigrant youth who qualifies for the development, relief, and education for Alien Minors Act. So that's the Dream Act. And they frequently interchange the terms of dreamer and DACA. Um, and that's because um, dreamers uh, qualify for, for DACA. Many dreamers have applied for DACA. And I'm going to get to DACA in a minute. So um, the, the um, term DACA, though, it, it relates to deferred action for childhood arrivals. So while many of us sort of think of dreamers just being Latino or Latinx, um, it's really a very diverse group of individuals. They come from a multitude of cultures and countries um, and seven of the top 24 countries, um, seven of multitude of them come from particular countries and that is Asia, Europe or the Caribbean. So, you know, we have thousands and tens of thousands that come from a var variety of other countries, not just Lat Latino or Latinx. Um, so the DREAM Act uh, is a piece of legislation that was first introduced to Congress back in 2001. And it was supposed to create a pathway for citizenship for these immigrant youth who were brought here from to the United States from with their parents, you know, and they're, they're here without documentation. And these, um, these young dreamers are American in every single way, except for a piece of paper, right. And so because um, after because Congress couldn't really get together and get this um, thing going for the Dream Act. In 2012, the Obama administration had announced a temporary program announcing dreamers to come forward, pass a background check, and apply for work permits. And this program is called Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And so they could apply for these, um, for this uh, 
documentation, be able to work legally in the United States and be protected from deportation. And then it was, you were able to renew it every two years. So currently there have about, there are about 800,000 um, young undocumented people who are considered dreamers and a lot of them have DACA. And so right now we're, you know, in this area where we're living in fear or they're living in fear because of what's been happening with the current administration that's not very um, friendly to Im any type of immigration laws, let alone uh, Dreamer or DACA um, immigration laws. And so when you think about those terms, like I said, Dreamer and DACA interchangeable, both immigrant youth that were brought here to the United States um, when they were young, went through the entire school system here. Um, and we have several undocumented, um, uh, a population of the undocumented folks that have come here maybe on a school visa or, or, or to visit and, and that visa ran out. So um, that is what the differences are. So the Trump administration most recently had a uh, sort of a fallout with the recent SCOTUS decision where uh, it was a 5-4 decision against uh, the Trump administration's request to end DACA. However, even though we kind of won with that uh, SCOTUS decision, they quickly, the Trump administration quickly wrote up a new memo and um, created different rulings. So even though with the new, with the SCOTUS ruling, you were supposed to be able to A, start up application of a new DACA, which had been stopped in 2016. And then you're able to renew your DACA if you have it for every two years, they've changed it so that there are no new applications accepted. And now it's renewed for one year. So there's a, it's, it's, this administration is slowly trying to eliminate the entire program that was created um, by the Obama administration. So with that, I'm going to, I think I'm supposed to hand it over to somebody. Am I handing it over now? Ms. Yamalet Martinez is going to take it at this point. Oh, Yvonne, Hello, everyone. Quickly, um, that someone is asking in the chat for a definition of SCOTUS, please. Oh, I'm just using terminology out there, right? It's the Supreme Court of the United States, SCOTUS. Thank you. All righty. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you uh, for being here with us today. My name is Yamilet. I am a current student at BCC, member of um, the ASAP Women Committee and a DACA recipient. Um, the purpose of this event is to bring to you a bunch of different resources that you can benefit from and together a group of strong individuals who want to make a difference. Um, there are a lot of different organizations that can assist you, not only at BCC, but um, outside of BCC as well. We put together this sheet for you that, um, for you to take full advantage of. Um, in this resource sheet, you can find scholarships, uh, financial aid, legal services, mental health support, and more. Um, there are free services, which is the great part about this. and. Um, you, um, we, must, we must take advantage of these resources that are there for us, right? Because if we don't, they will be removed. Um, there are a lot of organizations out there who you know, are helping us. All we have to do is just make our research and um, save our money and um, take advantage of these resources. Our goal um, is to bring together um, a community where we can discuss a variety of issues that affect us. Um, and be part of a solution um, and for network uh, networking opportunities. I know that sometimes um, we feel different and alone to some extent and afraid to say that we are DACA recipients or dreamers or undocumented. 
but um, we shouldn't be, right? We shouldn't be afraid. Um, we are not alone. There is a team at VCC ready and willing to assist us. Um, individuals who are already are already doing um, wonderful things for us already. Um, for example, uh, Yovani, who she's um, is an amazing person and has been working so hard uh, with with students that are in my category, I guess you could say. Um, and I unfortunately didn't know about her until literally a few months ago, which made me really upset in a way, but I'm happy. I'm, I'm really happy um, that we have her support, right? And I think that it's very important to emphasize how sad it was for me to not know about her until my last semester at BCC. Um, I didn't do my proper research. And also I feel like many faculty professor, professors and even advisors are not well informed or know how to help us. Um, but building a community at Bronx Community College can help them help us, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, a community, you know, would lead to a stronger support system for current students at BCC and also for future students as well. Um, and it would open so many more opportunities in BCC and outside at BCC as well, right? Um, as DACA uh, recipients, dreamers, undocumented, and just as people, right? We have we have to come together and build that brotherhood, sisterhood, because at the end of the day, um, we're all striving for the same dream, uh, or else we wouldn't be here pursuing a college degree. And um, you know, we all have similar stories. We're not so much different after all. And like Yaman once said, it's going to take a village for us to reach our full potential and reach um, self-actualization, right? So I really encourage you all to take advantage of these resources and do your research and help each other build a stronger support system at BCC. We have you know, our, our voice. Our voice is our power regardless of our immigration status. And in order to be heard, we must come together, come united and you know, let these people know who we are. Um, so with that being said, I'll let Yaman take the role. Thank you so much, Yamalet. It is awesome to see that kind of passion in a student. Um, I started at BCC at, a, at a, it feels like a eon ago, but it was literally about 12, 13 years ago. And um, I had started out as a scholarship uh, advisor and I moved to financial aid and then I moved to student life. And but when I went to financial aid, I had the pleasure and the honor and the pleasure of of being introduced to this program called the dream.us, right? And that the dream.us are all of these wonderful, wonderful individuals from both sides of the the, the political line. It's, you're talking about Republicans and and uh, Democrats, everybody, uh, religious and not so religious and everyone came together in this organization because of the realization of trying to help these youth that came here of no a fault of their own, their, their family looking for a better place for their family, right? And created this scholarship to help uh, undocumented students gain a college education. Because the hardest thing in the world was for a college, uh, a high school student to get to high school, get through all high school, and then go, what do you mean I can't go to college? You know, so it's a, it's a very hard realization. Um, and before, the, I want to tell you, before this scholarship, there was very little to nothing for undocumented youth in the, at that time. And so, um, I was pulled into this organization that was told all about this organization. They were like, okay, now go find some, some uh, uh, people with DACA in your school and, and have them apply to this scholarship because we have four days <laughs> for this scholarship. So I got a list of students that we thought, because we don't keep any documentation on students. None of the, the CUNY schools keep any documentation that states outright, you know, this person is, doesn't have documents. But um, we, we brought together this list and I went through the list, 250 people I called, two people got back to me. And it gives me great pleasure <laughs> to introduce one of those people who got back to me <laughs> Um, who came to my office and in a, in a very timid way said, is this for real, right? 
And I was like, please, yes, apply. Um, so Kiersey Martinez was a, a, a student in, I think, her first year at um, just completing her first year, just like a part way through it. She'll give you her story. But I, I wanted to say how she came to me out of 250 people, she, her and uh, one other person, and they were they didn't want to come forward. So this is the kind of you know, thing that you face every day. And she did. And so I, I, I think she's going to give you her whole title of what she is now from what she became and where she came from. So you got to hear this story. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Ms. Kiersey Martinez. Kiersey, sorry, you're muted. All right, can you guys hear me now? <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. And um, thank you everyone for joining in. I think you have already taken a very big step. Um, it's always said that knowledge, right, makes us rich. Knowledge is what gives us, opens the doors, right? So knowledge is very important and you have already taken that step to find out more. Um, so my name is Kirsi Martinez. I, I am a very, very proud graduate of Bronx Community College. I, I also went to City College, but BCC is my home. Uh, and I'm just so grateful that God led me to that place. Because um, as Yvonne was mentioning, um, it was very, being undocumented before, before DACA, you know, before 2012 was tough because you were afraid of saying anything. I remember whenever I had to take the train, I would start sweating and I would feel so nervous because it, it was that nerve wracking. You would think that ICE, uh, you know, the immigra immigration and, and police officers were after you. It was an unfounded fear, but it was still within that community. Um, so, when I graduated high school, going a little back into my story, I graduated high school back in 2005. It sounds like ages ago. And at that time, I was very eager to learn to go to college. Uh, that was my dream, right? To get an education and, and have a profession. However, as Yvonne mentioned, once I graduated high school, it was like a hit. I hit a dead end. There was nothing I could do. Even my advisor said, Kiersey, I am so sorry. You don't have a green card. There's nothing we can do for you. And it was painful to hear that. It's, it was like, wow, I put, up, I put so much effort. I made sure I learned English within one year, one year and a half to pass the regions, to do well. And now this is as far as I can go. So as you are probably dealing with this. Um, sometimes you go into depression, you start feeling um, useless. There are many words to describe what, what I was experiencing at that time. And I just felt lost. So it, it was very bad. And I was under so much stress and worry that my entire faith broke out in pimples. I was, I was doing like very bad. It was, it was a very difficult time. Um, especially because I was away from my family. They had, um, I had not seen them since uh, 2002. When I was 14 years old, I left my, my parents, my siblings. So it was hard. It was hard. And even though I, I was a few, re I had relatives that I could live with um, temporarily, I felt like I had no home, right? Um, so I, I can probably say I'd fall, I fell into the category of a homeless youth. And it was very nerve wracking. Um, but one day I said, hey, I need to get up and do what I need to do. And, and I know I had to send money back to my family in DR, in the Dominican Republic. So I started going restaurant by restaurant in Washington Heights, looking for work. I didn't know how to be a waitress. I didn't know the restaurant language. You know, uh, what were the names of the beast too and things like that. I, did, I had not learned that. But I just threw myself out there. I said, I am, I'm gonna earn an honest living and I'm gonna do what I need to do. Because this is not the end. As long as I'm alive, I'm healthy, and I'm capable of thinking, I can get there. So I started working as a waitress. 
um, because I knew uh, English, they transferred me to another restaurant. So it just got a little better. I was able to make a little more and uh, life went by. Eight years passed by just working as a waitress. But you know, now I look back and I am grateful that God allowed me to go through that process because that's when I developed confidence in myself. I used to be a very, very shy person. I would not walk uh, into a place and like look up or talk to people, but because I was a waitress and I had to relate to people and talk to them, I became friendly and it was easier for me to speak. So I was, without knowing it, I was developing people skills, which are very necessary. A lot of people can get adapted, but if they don't have people skills, it's kind of useless. So never look down on the job you're doing now. Never look down on what you uh, are experiencing now because you are developing as a person, as a whole. There are areas in your life that are being developed, even if, if others are not at the moment. So fast forwarding, eight years went by, um, and thank God, uh, President Barack Obama at the time came up with the DACA, right? Um, deferred Action for Childhood Arrival. And that's when I was finally able to go to college because I acquired um, a social security number. I was able to apply for in-state tuition. So it, it was kind of a door that had opened for me. From there, when I went to VCC, um, they were going to drop all my classes. I didn't have the money to pay for my first semester and I was freaking out. <laughs> so I was asking around for money to all my family members. Nobody had anything. Sorry, sorry, I can't help you. And I just felt like the world was crushing down on me, seriously. And I just, I remember falling on my knees. I had also applied for a job at Con Edison and unfortunately, I didn't pass the test that I needed to pass to go to the further step. So I just felt like, again, my war was ending. And I just remember getting on my knees in my room one day and just like dropping and saying, God, I can't, I'm, I'm done. There's nothing I can do. They're gonna drop my classes. I wanna do this and everything is over. That's how I felt. So I said, I give you the will you take control because there's nothing I can do. And uh, praise God, I actually said, I'm gonna do this last thing. And I just decided to go to BCC and go to every office possible and ask them to give me like, I don't know, to not drop my classes and to give me some time so that I could pay them. Um, and then I happened to pass by well, I went to everywhere in Colston Hall. <laughs> I went to all the administrative offices. So I passed by um, Yvonne Eras's office and I just said, hey, I'm undocumented. Um, at that point, you know, when DACA came up, I lost the fear of telling people that I had no papers. I said, if they don't know, how can they help me if they don't know that I have no papers? So I just started telling everyone I'm undocumented. I have applied to every scholarship possible online. Nobody calls me back. And, you know, I just started saying it. So I encourage you um, to lose the fear. And there are allies out there, especially at BCC, there are many allies, people who care. And if, you, if they don't know how they can help you, how can they do it? You know, so because I was able to, to tell Yvonne that I was undocumented and that there was nothing uh, for me. Um, she was able to let me know about that amazing scholarship, which is the Dream Die US. Um, so one semester in, eventually I found that I was able to borrow the money and pay for my first semester. But after that, I, I thought I was gonna have to drop out of school again. Um, so Yvonne actually let me know about the scholarship since I had a essay prepared because I had been applying for thousands of scholarships before, and I was able to have it ready for her the next day because she needed everything by the next day. So sometimes God allows us to, to do things and you in your mind you think you're failing because you're not getting what you are looking for, but you don't know if that's just being prepared 
for that time when you really need it because I already had an, uh, an essay that was very good. And thanks God, they um, accepted me into the scholarship and they paid for my associate's degree and also for my bachelor's degree. And that was mind blowing. So now that was one less thing I had to worry about. I could now focus on school and put all my efforts on that because God had provided the financial situation. Um, so another thing that happened at BCC, I noticed that there was a disconnect. Though I knew about many students who were undocumented like me, but they were not talking and they were not telling anybody. And I was like, hey, uh, what if we form uh, like a club and we put a club together, we actually were able to um, create the BCC club. That was the first club for undocumented um, and undocumented immigrants and also um, international students. So because of that, we learned so much. We learned about scholarships. Two of our friends were able to get a green card because there was a professor that, that knew that there was a law they qualified for. So imagine now they have their papers. If they wouldn't have joined the club and we wouldn't have spoken about our, our issues openly, they probably still would be struggling um, trying to figure out how to get their green card. So I believe that just like Jamilet mentioned, it's very important to create a community because we are not an island. And if we don't have others next to us, uh, there is very little we can actually do. Uh, we may have the passion and the potential, but we also need others to give us the knowledge and to tell us about the resources that we may not know. Um, so um, just to continue with the story. So um, I just felt so grateful. You know, I felt grateful that God had allowed me to go to college and had already, before I graduated, all that money was already provided to pay for it. Um, and I remember that one day I was walking up the stairs at BCC, I felt so grateful. And I said, Lord, you know what I want? I want to, I want to tell everybody about <laughs> what just happened, about what you're doing in my life. Because I came from wanting to kill myself. You know, I, I was going through such a bad depression, you know, during those eight years that I was working as a waitress. And, and there was like, there was no way of knowing if I was ever going to see my family again, if I was ever going to be able to go to college, it just felt so, so gloomy. And I just felt so um, locked, locked down. Um, it was, it was a very dark time in my life. So here I am able to go to college and with this great scholarship. Um, so it was like a new horizon, right? So I just felt so grateful. I, I remember praying and saying, Lord, Lord Jesus, I, I'm so grateful that I just want to tell everyone what you have done for me, for my life. And, and what better way to do it than speaking at commencement. So that was my goal. I said, I want to speak at commencement. And the only way I can do that is by becoming valedictorian. So I can, I can give a commencement speech. And two years later, behold, the Lord allowed me to get there. And I was able to give the speech and, and to, so giving all the credits uh, for, for putting so many wonderful people by my side, because alone, I would not have done it. I had a two-year-old daughter at the time and, and you know, um, husband and, and mother duty. It was a lot going on, but God helped me stay strong and, and get there. And now I get to share that wonderful story. Um, and the highlight is not really the, the success that came after that. But the fact that I was at the lowest, at the bottom of the bottom, and, and God was able to lift me up from there. So it doesn't matter in what situation you may find yourself now. These are very scary moments, uh, especially with this administration where things just change all the time and, and everything is, is moving so fast. And we just don't know what could happen with, with immigration laws and policies. Uh, but never lose faith. You know, things can go from, from being very bad to being very good. Things can change. And like I always say, uh, the bad times in our life are what make 
are the things that make our stories interesting later on, right? Because if there's really no struggle, I have nothing to tell others. So that's the point. When you struggle in life, you can come back and say, I was there and God have, has brought me here so far. So um, I want to thank you so much for, for taking this initiative to be part of our conversation. And please join anything that you see that Jamilet, Yvonne are talking about because it's good stuff, you know, and, and you're going to take a lot of good things out of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy, for sharing um, your, your story with us today. Um, your bravery and your resilience really gives me goosebumps because um, it's very beautiful to see that, you know, out of a struggle, you made something very beautiful out of this. And like you, I've also been um, in that situation where I've been so depressed and just in the rush of emotions and anger and like anxiety. And you feel all this because you feel like, damn, people really treat me different because of my, because of my status, right? But, um, you know, I'm very happy that everybody is here joining us today. So, you know, it's an initiative that they're taking and, and hopefully they take something good out of this and, um, and not be afraid, like she said. And, you know, don't be afraid of telling people who you are. Don't be afraid, don't, don't hide your identity because like she said, our struggles is what make us very strong. So if anybody has any questions, this could be the moment. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. Concerns, doubts. Nicole, is there is there are there any questions from the audience? No, there's no questions in the chat as of yet. Okay, so I'm gonna move for a little forward and um, talk a little bit about what. Um, the opportunity, like what Kiersey was talking about, the dream.us, and I'm gonna do that by sharing the screen a little bit. Uh, and if you do get any questions, you can let me know and I'll stop. Yes? Yeah, works for me. Okay, so let me get ready. So as I mentioned, I I worked with uh, Kiersey, and it was Kiersey and Yubelke's my first two dream.us babies. Uh, <laughs> And it's, it's hysterical because they were both so shy and, 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 and mild men, like they didn't, and she came and asked for help. Absolutely. Kiersey came and asked for help, but she was, she was very shy, not so, not so outspoken, but then she got the, she started getting so more involved, so much more involved. And then to, all of a sudden she's the president of the, of this uh, dreamer club and she is bringing in these people who are amazing to come speak at these at at the at the club events and then all of a sudden we're at every cuny event that has a, a a dreamer and then from only three schools being involved with the dream.us every cuny school got involved because it just made so much more sense to stretch this the scholarship, which I'm about to tell you about, it's it was twenty five thousand dollars a um for the full amount, right? So that's supposed to last you your whole entire education. In private schools, that's not going to very last very long. At a community college, you're paying almost half of what you're paying at a four year CUNY, right? A little, little less, little more than half. And then if you move on to the four year, you still have money. So it made, only made sense for CUNY to jump on board and have every entire CUNY college under this umbrella. So she, Kiersey was at every event for them, whatever they wanted to talk about. She's like, I'm for it. It's going to happen. All these opportunities are coming. So um, I'm going to um, share my screen so I could show you some of the um, wonderful opportunities that Oops, that's, is that the right screen? No, of course not. Uh, it's the wrong screen. So let's do this. Can you see the dream.us on there? Awesome. Just moving the screen on over. <laughs> All right. So 
The dream.us, like I said, it started about, I want to say 20, 2012, 2013. Um, and, uh, We've moved from having two scholars in our very first year, and now I have about, I think I have about 10 scholars um, for this year alone coming in. Um, and so, and students are now applying on their own and finding out about it. So they have two types of scholarships. Um, I'm sorry, I'm turning my head, it's because I had to ch change the screen. Uh, they have two types. So the National Scholarship is for students who are just coming out of high school, graduating high school. Sorry, and wanna, um, yes. Um, something happened with your screen share. Yeah. It kind of went blank. It's blank now? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't, I'm going to have to stop sharing for a second. I don't understand. Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's just see. try it again. Okay. I'm going to try it and see. All right. So now you see my email or you see something no, else? No, we see the dream.us page. Okay. So um, the national scholarship is for students who are just graduating out of high school and planning to enter college and students who are just graduating from community college and planning to enter the four year. So um, either one of those, I also tell students who are currently in community college, like you still got another year, apply for this scholarship. <laughs> they could only tell you no, right? So I have students who come to me in, in their you know, first semester that they've already put a semester in or they put a year in and they're like, oh, I just heard about this, can I apply? And I have them apply. And the likelihood of them being accepted into the for the scholarship is very high, right? Um, this is actually opening, boom, November 1st, plug, plug, plug. If you want to apply for this scholarship, please, by all means, Nicole Benjamin's going to put um, my information up at the end of this, and you can email me to schedule appointments to be begin um, um, working on your scholarship, on these scholarships. The, the other um, scholarship is called the Opportunity Scholarship, and these are for dreamers who for some reason or another were locked out of college, right? Um, and so they had their, you know, they, like it says here, like they were faced with paying out of state tuition or their their particular state wouldn't admit them into college. So this is to help those type of, um, those kind of dreamers who may find, have found an opportunity to finally um, enter college. And that is also opening on uh, November 1st. The wonderful state we live in, New York State, had a fantastic, God bless his soul, senator who really pushed for us as a state to have our own dream act. Um, and this dream act was to really help students attending New York City colleges, right? Um, New York State colleges. And so uh, Senator Jose Peralta got his wish. Unfortunately, he did pass away, um, but his, his dream was realized when he, when he, when uh, New York State moved forward with the New York State Dream Act, very similar to what TAP is for um, sit U.S. citizen students. Um, this is what uh, the kind of financial aid that you would get from this state, right? Anyone of any um, undocumented status, so Dreamer, DACA, you, you waited out a visa too long, apply for this scholarship. If you're attending one of the schools within New York State, you can apply for this scholarship. It is open now. Um, once you apply, it's very, very simple application. They're not asking you for any identifying numbers like social security, blah, blah, blah. What they do is they give you like a one pager. You answer those questions. They email you. Your information is kept not kept in a, like a database. 
So that way your information can never be retrieved from, let's say, they, 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 ICE wants information, that is never gonna happen because it's not kept on a database. You can't even see the, the, the information. But um, once they approve you, once you fill out that one application, you can go on to also apply for the Excelsior scholarship, which also is for students who are undocumented, not just, doc, not just US citizens. So you get the opportunity to have both scholarships. This particular scholarship, well, not scholarships, this, these funding awards. Excelsior is a scholarship. This is a funding. This is financial aid. You don't have to pay it back. Neither do you have to pay back a scholarship. The DREAM Act can give up to $2,400 per semester, which almost fully pays for your tuition at a community college, which is fantastic, right? And then if you can enter a program like ASAP, this wonderful, wonderful program that I love so much, they will also assist you with book money and every other thing that they can try and assist you with. ASAP tries to get you everything they can get you. So if you're not a part of ASAP, these people right here are probably the people you want to talk to. So this is open now. You can apply right now. And it's at this um, uh, link. I am going to be sending uh, to Nicole and Tiffany a listing of all these links that I'm talking about now so they can be sent out to you. The Women's Forum of New York also has a scholarship for women 35 years and older who um, have gone through very extreme circumstances uh, to try and obtain their their education. And it's a $10,000 award. And their application says nothing about having to be a US citizen, but you do have to have, you have to have got, had your, gotten your education within New York City. And we have a couple of winners here as well. Um, and oops, I'm going through it. All right. Something that uh, all CUNY students, is available to all CUNY students for absolutely free or low and co uh, low cost um, legal fees maybe that the, if you need some low cost and no cost legal fees is CUNY citizenship now. They are consistently helping students get on the pathway to citizenship or assisting them with their legal, um, their legal situation with regard to immigration. Um, if you're out there and you're paying a lawyer and ask them at an alarming rate of money, you should go here, call them or email them and find out if they can help you with your situation at a lower to no cost. Okay. They're consistently having programming and Zoom one-on-ones um, -on with people to help them. A, renew DACA, renew uh, H1N1 visas, all those kind of situations. And it's, they take priority in CUNY students first. So they also help communities, the local area community, but they'll help, they put priority on CUNY students. And they all find out, cause they work with many of the local area non-for-profits to find out about funding that those organizations are getting to help get fees waived, like the $495 DACA renewal fee, they have organizations come to them and say, hey, we have enough for 20 or 200 uh, renewal waivers. So that's the place you wanna go to if you wanna find out anything about citizenship, anything about um, legal fees for immigration purposes. The door org is another organization. I know two of my, my um, dream.us scholars did find a pathway to citizenship through there. Um, they were under the age of 21. So that's some, there's some different rulings for that, but they will help you find volunteer opportunities, um, possibly employment, uh, help you with finding legal fees. They, and like I said, they do DACA renewals as well for free sometimes because they also get funding this is one of the, those local organizations and they if possible if you're eligible for that citizenship before the age of 21 they will let you know 
a scholarship that's available to all students, regardless if you are Mexican or not. <laughs> you don't have to be Mexican to apply for the CUNY Becas. It's a, a Mexican Studies Scholarship Fund. They fund you per semester, so you would have to apply every semester for this particular award. This one, I believe, is open. It should be opening soon. Um, and the, the only thing is that you'll have to do a couple of things, right? You have to do, be willing to do community service in, in Mexican communities around the city. Um, and they ask you to do team building. They give you professional development workshops all throughout this time that you are spending um, in your, do, uh, attaining your education. You don't have to just do it from to Lehman. It's just that I always, whenever I pull it up, it always pulls up Lehman first, but it's open to all CUNY students. Um, the Jack Kent Cook Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship is one of the most competitive scholarships uh, nationwide. Uh, if you, they get in an average of 6,500 applications a year. They cut it right in half because they eliminate half if you have one thing off on your application or whatever. Um, and then out of that half that's left, they choose about 500 or so to be semi-finalists. Most semi-finalists get a full ride at a, a, a university or college of their choice just by that designation, if they, even if they didn't win the full finalist one. Finalists get 40, to, and I think this year is 45 or 40, might be $40,000 a year until they receive their bachelor's and then have the opportunity for $75,000 towards their graduate school. They, this award is open to um, students who have, who are undocumented. So the eligibility, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. US citizenship is not required for this. So you have to have, a, have attained or be attending an accredited two-year institution in the United States. So this is a community college. So I really wanted to kind of go over these particular opportunities. There's always more opportunities they come across me my my email sometimes i i have the opportunity to send them out to everybody and then sometimes i don't so i just really did want to um give you the opportunity to understand what's out there for right now i mean there's so much more out there than what i have right um but you have to be willing to ask even if you're shy at first and then you become a warrior just like Kiersey, or if you know, you're know you unsure. The, right now, every campus under CUNY is considered a safe campus. Your status is just that. It has absolutely, it goes nowhere outside of the one-on-one -on -one you're having with whoever you're speaking to. So you can feel confident to come up to someone and talk to them and ask them any question. And I see that my time is up. So I am going to hand it to the next speaker. Who's the next speaker? I have Nicole here. I'm sorry, not Hi. Nicole, Jasmine. <laughs> And Jasmine, you're muted, by the way. So we want to thank you all on behalf of the women's, the ASAP Women's Empowerment Committee and Student Life for being at our event today. Um, like, you know, um, Yvonne, Chrissy, and Jamilet said, we want you to take advantage of the many opportunities that are available to you at BCC. Build that community. Try not to be shy. If you are shy, 
try to speak to your advisor or, you know, someone that you feel comfortable speaking to to kind of sort of um, grow and, and just, you know, ask for what you need and the help that is available to you. Um, here on the screen, you'll see Yvonne's contact information and Chrissy's information and the Women's Empowerment Committee email. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, concerns. Um, and thank you so, so much again for being here and being part of this event. Um, I, I do wanna say that there was a question that was asked earlier, Nicole. I don't know if you want to jump in on that. Yeah, I'm sorry guys. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Um, one was asking Yvonne to talk a little bit more about the resources Sorry, I don't have my video on. <laughs> so one of them was, um, can you talk about a little bit more, Yvonne, about the resources for the path to citizenship? Um, I don't know if you know much about that particular process, but just to explain the basics to students, just in case, you know. Well, I, I don't, I don't have I don't, I don't help students gain citizenship, but the, the way they should be, right now they should be asking the questions to CUNY Citizenship Now only because, like I said before, if you're paying a private lawyer, you are paying a lot of money. And that in itself should make you question, okay, maybe let's see if there's something else I could do. I can tell you that CUNY Citizenship Now helps students um, put people on a pathway to citizenship, or maybe they need their parents to have that pathway. Because remember, CUNY students, some CUNY students were born here, but maybe their parents, you know, weren't. So maybe they need that for their parents and they're trying to help their parents. So whatever situation that you are currently in, uh, a DACA renewal, uh, a DACA, we want to start a DACA application, even though I, I, I would still try and start it anyway, because I don't care what Trump says. <clears throat> anyway, um, if you want, if you have some type of legal situation, use CUNY Citizenship now to your advantage. Also, there is an Immigration Student Success Center in John Jay College currently that any CUNY student can walk into and, and ask questions of, because they always send out opportunities to, to my email about volunteer opportunities, job opportunities, and, and things of that nature. Um, look at your emails. I can't even stress that enough. I know it seems antiquated. They're like, email? Oh my God, if you can't text it to me. But guess what? Everything we send out is via email. And if you're you need an opportunity and you've missed that opportunity because you have not read an email that says BCC broadcast or it's come from myself or someone else, then you're missing out, right? Um, the process for citizenship might be a lengthy one under CUNY Citizenship Now or, you know, through the assistance of some of these out, outside uh, not-for-profit organizations, but it's probably going to be one that is less costly. And then there's a second question that says, how would a student know that they are eligible for the opportunity, the scholarship, different scholarship opportunities? And does the institution verbalize the reason for denial, if they're denied? Uh, the organization would let you know if they've accepted you or not. So the dream.us, um, is pretty straightforward with their eligibility requirements. But if you make an appointment with me, we can sit down and we can talk about, you know, what is it that qualifies you for which particular award? Uh, my thing about the new, the Jose Peralta New York State Dream Act, which is actually a financial aid um, from the New York State, is that if it's open to stu students who have all any type of immigration issue and are undocumented, you should apply. And I can also help you do that. You could email um, me. Uh, you saw the email that was put out there. Or you can send an email to bccdreams at bcc.cuny.edu. I'll put that in the chat. Okay. And then the final question will be, can you talk about any other resources available to 
DACA dreamers or undocumented student that's outside of academic scholarships and the pathway to citizenship. So say for instance, like if a student um, happens to be, get evicted, you know. Yes. Are there any resources or funding to help them find a place and get back on their feet? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna plug uh, our access resource center here, ARC. Um, we just received a hundred thousand dollar grant award uh, that is for strictly for undocumented students right now. But um, I'm going to plug Kiersey in on this because I know she's working with some of our politicos, and she might know some some. Um, folks that can help out with that. But ARC, uh, who's uh, the director is uh, Ms. Deidre Polite. She, they have uh, the opportunity and the ability to go through resources and find what resources you're eligible for, as well as, like I said, there's undocumented uh, funding that's coming to us from a grant, uh, which it applies to anything, not just tuition. Let's say you do owe a little rent. You have um, utilities that are backed up. You can't pay childcare. You need food, food money. Those are the type of opportunities that ARC works with. And this particular grant money would, would work with. And ARC also has, um, has a food bank, um, a food pantry. So you can go there and get food absolutely free. Kiersey? All right, can you hear me? Hi, yes. So uh, the board, the BCC Board of Directors did announce, right, that there was a private funding uh, where undocumented and undocumented students can apply for, you know, if you need uh, things such as, you know, like money for food or for housing. So I do encourage you to email me. Uh, my email is there in the chat. You can, by all means, send me a message and I can definitely look into it um, to help you access this funding. And there are also, unfortunately, through the city and the state, it's very limited, the funding that's available for, for us. I still consider myself like a documented uh, regardless. Uh, but unfortunately, the money cannot be uh, tax money. So that's why there's not a lot of resources available, but there are nonprofits that are definitely giving private funding for these purposes. So by all means, you can refer someone to my email or you can write an email to me so I, I can look further into how to assist you with that. So there's another question here in the chat. Um, Is there any resources for undocumented student work paid internship of any kind of, of any sort? There. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Kirsten. Go, go. <laughs> go first, Yvonne, that's fine. Um, I do receive, like I said, I do receive um, information from the immigrant um, Im Immigrant Student Success Center from John Jay College. And I try and get that information out to folks. Um, folks who are documented, which means they have their DACA, they have the opportunity to, to uh, uh, get paid internships and, and fellowships and things of that nature and employment, right? But there are also opportunities for students who were eligible for DACA but didn't were unable to apply for it due to the fact that it was like stopped in 2016 and then just restarted very, very briefly um, now. Um, I, I can try and go through my um, email because I know that the dream.us also sent me uh, a, a listing of opportunities how you can kind of work for yourself as well, right? You, you can be your own kind of contractor and get funding. So uh, I'm gonna, I can pull those together. Uh, I'll try and get them to Nicole and, um, and Tiffany to get out to you. Probably not at the same time as these links because I have to look back into my email, but I'll, I can try and get that information out. But there are opportunities far and few, be, few and far between, but, and you have to search for them, but 
we can work together and get them to get out to you. Okay, and then there's one more question. Are there uh, hold on, Nicole. I think Kirsi was also going to answer that, right? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Actually, Yvonne touched on it. So a few days ago, I recall receiving an email from the Dream.us saying that there are actually a brand new opportunity to do an internship from home. Let's say they need you to do a project. Uh, like, I don't know, there's a company that needs you to do like a, create an Excel program with their clients. So they will pay you per project. So I'm, I'm gonna also look into that email and see how we can forward that to you. I'm just not sure is, if it's specifically for Dream the US alumni, right? Uh, but I, I will look into it to see if you do qualify for that. Sorry guys. Um, so the next question that I had that was in the chat are, are there any scholarships available for international students? Yes, there are scholarships uh, for international students. Uh, again, the Jack Kent Cook is, is open to um, international students. BCC is gonna about to open its foundation scholarship, I believe is open. It may be open already. Um, so you can check the scholarships page uh, on the BCC website. Um, there's also a listing of scholarships on that website if you scroll down and I usually work one-on-one -on -one with uh, some students to try and help them um, identify awards that they are eligible for. Um, we don't have a scholarship office per se, but I usually work with the Dream.us scholarship, the um, Women's Forum of New York, the Jack Kent Cook um, scholarship, Kaplan Leadership Scholarship, which is opening up on October 1st, but um, I'm not sure, if, I don't think it's for international students, but, um, and I believe we have Khalif Browder, which I try and identify some folks for as well. So uh, those are the ones I mainly work with, uh, but if we work together, we can I, tr sort of do, a re do the research, apply to the scholarship, and then move on, do that. That's a wash, rinse, rinse, repeat method, right? Research a scholarship, find a scholarship, apply to the scholarship. All right, research a scholarship, find a scholarship. So that's what I do. Um, just for the sake of time, um, is there a specific method in how you want students to make appointments to see you, Yvonne? I, I always ask students to send me an email with the days during the week and times that they're available, right? Because, and it's not just for this week, it's got to be, give me at least two or three weeks of days that you have, right? And list those days because um, a lot of times I, I, my overall position is actually student activities. And so I oversee clubs and organizations. We're coming into time of club fair this Thursday, if you haven't registered RSVP today. Um, so I have to get past a couple of craziness, crazy days, and then I, I want to make sure I have the time and opportunity to sit and speak with you. But I also would like you to know that if you're going to ask for um, my help with a scholarship, that you should A, have a personal statement at least um, started already. And that's all about you. What, you know, uh, what, what made you want to go to college? What are you, what are you studying? Where do you want to go after this? Uh, what kind of volunteer opportunities have you participated in? Are you involved on campus? All that kind of stuff, it's going to go into your personal statement, right? And why you want to go and continue your education. So kind of either start that um, and have it ready, or we can sit and discuss it but you've already kind of started writing it out, all right? So that, that, that would be it. Um, is, are those all the questions, Nicole? 
Yes. Those are all the questions that were in the chat. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Jasmine, close us out. <laughs> um, wait before you close us out. Let me share my screen one more time. Okay. So if you guys have um, a cell phone, you could take a quick pic. That way you would have um, everyone's contact information. So I'll give you a few minutes, a few seconds to take a pic of that. Can someone put... Um... Yama, let's contact information there so that if students want to connect with Yama, let to create these opportunities or create these spaces or create these groups and even clubs that will make create, you know, these moves mm -hmm. to help other students. That'd be great. Anyone who's interested yes. in, we, in working with have us. have access to this, um, the ASAP Women's Empowerment um, email. So she'd be able to get that. That's just so that they don't bombard her with too many emails. So she All right. access to this specific email. Awesome. And the same thing with KRC. They'll just email here, and then we can always forward those emails to KRC. All right. Well, and I just then, I actually wanted to thank all of the the guests today, and thank everyone who made this possible. It's so important. Um, I can't even express to you how much um, just having to get to know this entire population of students means to me. Um, and, and knowing that, you know, there are people out there who still, who understand that it's difficult. It's, this is not an easy status to live with. Um, I had students who, who uh, had a parent get a ticket um, for getting on the bus and then I ended up paying for their ticket because they were scared that they were going to be hauled off by ICE because of this unpaid ticket. So, you know, you never know what someone is going through. And, and if you are listening to rhetoric out there about DACA, Dreamers, undocumented folks, you know, then you're, you don't have both sides of the story and you should always ask a question. So working together to really create opportunities for all is the best thing you could do during your time here at BCC. And I thank you all for attending and I thank all the speakers. I really appreciate this. And to plug the remainder of our BCC Civic Action Week, as you can see, we have National Voters Registration Day um, coming up tomorrow, 12 to 2. We have the Marathon Day, and then we have Club Fair coming up. So um, RSVP, come out, get some more information. Take um, the census. Do the census. Yep. Do right. the census. There's no, there's no information on there that's going to get you in trouble if you're undocumented, documented, whatever. Do the census. It's important to get funding in your areas. And if you uh, have, if you can't vote and your friend can vote and if they love you, they'll vote so they can help you get laws enacted for, for you and your family. So voter registration. And Jasmine, this is you. Okay, so thank you all for um, being here and attending the event. We also want to thank the speakers, Yvonne, Chrissy, Jamalette. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and your um, expertise and your stories. Um, we look forward to seeing you all in our next events tomorrow and the Thursday. <laughs> so thank you again and have a great evening, everyone.